When you played with AND gates and NAND gates, you were building an asynchronous circuit. Here we're going to build an asynchronous sequential network. You've been playing with Mealy, Moore, and algorithmic state machines, but they all had clocks. If you remember when we first built a SR latch out of NAND gates or XOR gates, that's when we changed over from just a pure asynchronous circuit to a network. But we immediately added the clock. And you might, in your mind, think, well, you absolutely need a clock in order for a flip-flop to work. No, we can go back to the SR latch and build a sequential network at that level, that close to the ground, that close to the fundamental concepts, the first principles. This asynchronous sequential network topic is going to feel really weird. And once you get used to it, you're going to fall in love with it. Because it's so strange, because its scope is so different, um, we're going to start with a reverse engineering example and just play with how different it is. And then we're going to go through two top-down design engineering examples and then a real one instead of just practicing all these different techniques at each of these design stages, we're actually going to do a real-world problem called the combination lock. Now, the state diagram is often not the starting point when designing a asynchronous sequential network. It actually gets in the way of picturing what's going on and all the issues that you need to pay attention to. But once you get through this, then you can go back through Melium Moore, finite state machines, go back through the algorithmic state machine again, and just add all these things to each step. The benefit of doing this is that your sequential networks, your synchronous sequential networks, will run faster. You can clock them up faster. So we're starting with a reverse engineering circuit where we're going to work our way up from the bottom up. So you might want to download this Logisim simulation and begin playing with it. Uh, don't click on ASN right now and don't click on delay uh, the ASN circuit. We're not looking at the details of it. We're looking at it from an end user's point of view. How does it behave? And I've done it twice, once with delays and once without. And You can just see that uh, this down here behaves the same way as up here. Uh, so don't um, try to make a difference between these. Just concentrate on the inputs here, the states. Instead of having Q1 and Q2 to indicate the present state, what we have are Y1 and Y2. And you'll understand why the symbol has changed from Q to Y coming up. And then our output again is Z. So to understand some of the strangeness, let's just look at it from a normal finite state machine point of view. Let's just record what states we end up at and what the output is for these sequences. So there should be nothing mysterious at this point. When you first open this up, it has an error in it. So our first goal is to get rid of the error. And we don't see a clock. We can't bang on the clock. So let's go up here to simulate and reset it. No. All we can do is bang on these inputs. There we go. And now our goal is to get to the zero, 00 state so we can just start off. OK, I got there by random. We've got a zero, 00 and we've got a zero, 00 state. OK, now we're going to go to a 1. And we're still at zero, 00. Now we're going to go to 1, 1. And now we're going to go to 1, 0. Now we're going to go to 0. OK, let's do it one more time and get Z's value. OK, so we're starting off at a 0, 0 state. Now we're making x2 a 1. 
So now we're to one, one, zero state. Now we're making both of them a one. And we saw two bits toggle. Okay, now we're going to a zero, one. Now we're going to a zero, zero. And we're at a one, zero state. And our output's a one. And now we're going to a one, zero state and we get a 1-1. One, one. So our Z is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. So here are the answers that we put on the previous slide. And you're asking yourself the question, why this drawn out detail where we're just changing things here and writing these down? The whole point is that this feels normal, but there's no clock. There's no rising edge yet this circuit is working. It's definitely remembering something because here when the inputs are 0, 0, we got a 0, 0. Here where there's 0, 0, it's a 10. So there's definitely memory going on inside this circuit. It's acting like a sequential network, but it feels like a combinatory circuit. It looks like a combinatory circuit. You don't see any flip-flops in here. Where is the feedback? Well, there is no feedback right here. This Y1 is looped around and connected to this Y1. So this Y1 is looped around and connected to this Y1. This Y2 is looped around and connected to this Y2. There's the only memory going on in this circuit. Right there. And because we're not using flip-flops, we've switched to capital Y and lowercase y. The whole point is that this feels normal. The inputs are driving the memory event. The inputs themselves are saying, remember now. It's not the clock saying, remember now. So there's a purity to these asynchronous sequential networks. They feel more natural. This is the part that works like our brain. It's event driven. So let's look at these delays. You saw there was no difference down here and up here. The delays are not necessary. Delays are something that you will see people put in to their circuits as band-aids at the very last moment. Now why are there delays right here in these feedback lines? I don't know. It simulates without the delays just fine. Next step is to physically build it and see if I have to put in a bunch of buffers, a bunch of chips in here to delay it. Our goal now is to turn this into equations. And I trust that you can do that. So here are the equations. We need equations for this y, capital Y1, as our function of these inputs right here that include lowercase y1 and y2. So there's your loop right there. And when you don't have a delay, how do you distinguish between Y2 and Y1? What makes it a difference? Well, this is the magic of the asynchronous sequential network. When there's stability, when our big Y1 and our little Y1 result in the same Y1 in a gigantic circle like this, which is actually how our brain works, then there's stability and the circuit remembers. So let's get this excitation table started. We build it from these equations right here. So we have how many flip-flops? Well, we don't have any, but we need to think of them in terms of virtual flip-flops or hidden flip-flops. How many of these hidden flip-flops do we have? Well, we have two. Think of these y's as q's. So we have q1, q2. So we have our present state, and that's going to be our lowercase y1 and y2. And there's four possibilities. And then we have, as inputs, we have x1 and x2. So this is our next state, which is going to be the capital Y1 and Y2. And we're going to have a next state for all the various possible combinations of x1 and x2. Now, it's really important not to confuse the Carnot map with this next state section of the table. And then finally we have our output Z 
And because our output has x1 and x2 in it, it's a Mealy circuit. So we have to write down our inputs again. So let's begin. y1, y2, x1, x2. y1, y2, x1, x2. 1 and 0 is a 0. 1 and 0 is a 0. 1 and 0 and 1 is a 0. So this is going to be a 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, so this is going to be a 0, 1 and a 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, so this is going to be 0, so everything's a 0. So you should be able to repeat this 16 times. So let's move on and look at the table. This is where things get interesting. Okay, so here's the table. The reason this is circled is because y1 and y2 equals y1 and y2. This is called a stable state. This means it'll stick there. This means that a, a memory event occurred. So there's a remembering of this z value. This remembering is no different than the synchronous sequential networks that we've studied already. So now we're at the point where we're going to start naming differences between synchronous and asynchronous sequential networks. You've just heard me use the word stable state as when capital Y1 equals lowercase y1 and we circle those in this table. So there's going to be this explosion of words defining concepts that are new such as stable state. There's going to be a rant about clocks that should start growing and there's going to be a rant about delays. Why are we adding delays when our sole goal is to speed things up? It just seems counterintuitive. So those are some of the things you're going to feel. And then you're going to start dreaming about what can I do with this? How can I use these things to build a key stuck on a keyboard and distinguish that from a, a long pause versus a short pause versus a tap on a touch screen. And why do I have to look at the touch screen 8,000 times a second at every single little pixel? That's just a humongous waste of energy. So that's the kind of thinking that drives you into this world. Half of what we talk about here parallels the actual structures that make up a brain. And then it's going to drive you into tri-state logic. This gets back to debouncing a circuit. It's on, it's off, but the reason the SR latch debounces is because there's this third state in the middle where nothing's happening. We can only move from an on state to an off state or off to an on by going through this not connected to anything state in the middle. So there's a one bit translation from on to nothing to off or from off to nothing to on. And because we've got to go through that nothing state, it turns into tri-state logic. So when we start thinking about the async world, we get out of this binary thinking. And these are all future classes. Now this particular subject, asynchronous sequential networks, turns into a full-blown three credit with a lab senior level class also. Remember, the number one reason we're studying asynchronous sequential networks is to speed up synchronous networks that we've been designing so far. You're going to go, well, this is the biggest waste of energy in the planet, and it doesn't even enter into any kind of energy conservation equation. And you're absolutely right. So if you feel yourself doing a what if, I could build my own clock not based upon the internal beating of a crystal inside of my computer, but based upon the external events out there in the world, this is the place to start. Don't try to manipulate the clock in the synchronous world it will drive you down this deep dark hole where there are no solutions. This is the purity. This is the place to start. 